Um, my name is Nanyo Jamagi from Maryland High School. We also thank Maryland for having sponsored this program. Um, today we're going to look at something new that is how to write a curriculum vitae. But before we go to how to write a curriculum vitae, I want to thank all the students and the parents who helped their children to respond to the question that I left last week on minutes writing. Uh, <laughs> I really got uh, an overwhelming uh, response. It was really commendable. Thank you so much for all the students who participated. I, I, I tried to really respond and mark here and there. And then these are some of the corrections that I would wish to make to all the learners that participated. Now, most candidates really wrote the minutes very well. I want to really thank the teachers out there. They have really done a very good job to the schools and their students. Uh, as I was teaching last week, I think I was doing a lot of revision with many of the learners because they had already learned this. So some of the corrections that I would like to make, as much as the format really, the formats really came out very well for most of the learners who wrote, there are some few elements that really needed to be worked upon. For example, the skipping of lines. I realized that most learners, most candidates were skipping lines. I would call upon on teachers out there to really... Um, uh, emphasize this, the skipping of lines in English language is unacceptable, it is, it, is, it is uncalled for, and if you do it as a candidate, marks are going to be reduced from you. Please do not attempt to do that. Stop skipping lines. Then something else I also noticed was the use of capital letters during the writing of um, our subtopics. For example, when writing the, uh, the registration, members present, members absent with apology, members up, and so many other subtitles. For example, when I looked at the subject, the minute subjects, many of us were using capital letters. Please do not use the capital letters again. They are not acceptable. Just write the small letters and then underline those subjects. We shall take them at that. Then I also looked at the signatures. Uh, some of us are confused on where to place which signature for either the secretary or the chairperson. Now, I said last time that the signature comes for, for, for the secretary comes first and then the signature for the chairperson. Why? I also gave a reason that the reason we sign, the secretary signs first is because she or he is the one who has written the minutes. So has to own them before they are read to the public and then accepted as a true copy. And then after that, the chairperson can sign. That's why the secretary comes first and then the chairperson. And then something else, I also noticed that after the chairperson and the secretary's signature, please endeavor to write the names of the secretary and the chairperson in capital letters. They're not in small letters because the small letters have helped us to sign. So now we're writing the names in capital letters. Then also... Uh, the language that should be used or the tense that should be fo uh, focused on using while writing uh, uh, minutes should be in reported speech, should be passed because you're, you're already writing something that has already taken place. And then uh, when you look at, we need you to number the items, especially on the agenda. The reason is it's going to help you work on which minute you'll be which item will represent which minute. For example, if we have item one as the opening prayer, then it will be easy for you to say minute one, this, this, and this, and then you have the opening prayer as your item one, since you already indicated it on the agenda. Uh, otherwise, with all those, I think, and a few others, you really did very good work. I thank you so much. I tried to really respond. The, the response, I mean, you, you, your reaction, your response was really overwhelming. But I tried to mark some of you, sent comments. Um, thank you so much for your participation. It showed me because I got participants from all walks of life, from the whole country, across the country. So it showed that there are many people out there who are really watching this program. Thank you so much for paying attention. And I know you, you, you will benefit a lot from it. Now, today I want us to put our emphasis on curriculum vita. Now, these aspects, these of functional writing are quite important and very important to us. Why? Because we use them in our day-to-day -day life. That's why we call it functional writing. It, it, we look at the functions of, of, of life. What, what, what will function in our life or what helps us function in life? Yes, as much as you may have the grammar out there, and you can use it very well, you can have the spoken very well, you can write very well, but are you able to function in your day-to-day -day life? Are you able to, in case you're in a meeting, can you be able to write me? Now, here we have a curriculum vita. Somebody would ask, what is a curriculum vita? A curriculum vita, basically, it is just giving some more brief details of your life, career, 
uh, rather personal life, career, qualifications, basically about your life so that the person you are, rather where you are applying for a job can get to know who you are. Uh, what have you, who, how are you to begin with? What have you achieved in life? So what, what are you good at? So apart from you writing the application letter and presenting it to the person, you, I mean to the company you're applying the job from or an industry or a school or a hospital, wherever you're applying the job, can you also give us some bre uh, details about yourself? When I, I say about yourselves here, you're going to look at your personal life. Of course, that's a bio data. We shall look at your academic background. We shall look at your work experience. Of course, sometimes you don't have any work experience, especially if you're just out of school. But if you do, you can also indicate it. You can tell us the responsibilities you have once held, maybe when you're in school, university, or even out there on your form from your former job or where you've been working. So that the, the other person who's going to employ you can get to know truly who this person is, can really see who is this person I'm going to employ. I mean, what is this person going to add onto my business? So all this will be seen in your curriculum vitae. It may not necessarily be put in the application letter, but you realize that the curriculum vitae at least gives all the details that the other person would wish to know or the other body would wish to know about you. And basically, maybe can based on that to employ you. Uh, actually, under many circumstances, we have seen that the application letters, as much as they're important, sometimes they're not even read. But these people are going to look at your curriculum vitae and see how far you have gone in life. Who are you? How old are you? I mean, what, what, what are those uh, commendable uh, skills you have? What are your hobbies? What are you good at? Basically, they're going to look at That's why at this level in senior three, senior four, we really look at curriculum vitae. Sorry, curriculum vitae. So that by the time we go out there in the field, in the world, we are able to express ourselves and then maybe give brief accounts of our lives and our careers and maybe qualifications. So basically here today, uh, like I've said, I've already said that you basically give your uh, brief details about personal life, career, qualifications. And do not forget that the curriculum vitae is enclosed, is enclosed with the, an application letter. They go hand in hand. Uh, most cases when you're writing a, a, an application letter, do not forget to enclose a curriculum vitae, whether they have asked it uh, from you or not, because you know it is mandatory for you to do that. Now, we're going to look at some of um, the basics of a curriculum vitae. What, what should we put in mind when we are writing a curriculum vitae? There are some things that we should put in mind when we are writing this curriculum vitae. To begin with, at least ensure that your curriculum vita is suitable. To the job you are applying. It should be suitable. Don't just write for the sake, but make sure that whatever you put in that curriculum vita is really uh, something that is relevant. Then we are saying that you keep your curriculum vita short. Keep it short. Uh, somebody's going to ask how short. Let's look at two pages. There can be two pages. I'm saying the two pages, but one can also be depending on what you have achieved in life. But we have people who have achieved a lot in life. But we are saying if you can manage, put it in two pages. Don't make it too long because you're going to exhaust the, exhaust the other person reading and before you know it is bored reading what you know is about your life. But if you, can, if you have a lot and you can write more, please go ahead. However, we are saying that look at the two pages as a, uh, the, uh, at least as a good, uh, uh, as the page is possible, you can compress it. Then we look at uh, you talking about presenting yourself in a positive way. Hmm? Present yourself in a positive, positive, in a positive way. Mm? Here we're going to look at uh, the objective. Normally, when we are talking about the objective and uh, objectives and uh, profile, I really focus so much on the profile because basically, on the profile, you're going to talk about yourself. Maybe before, I, what I've not talked about is that when you look at the curriculum vitae. Um, I will give you, maybe I will recommend the, uh, the, the Oxford Dictionary, uh, the ninth edition. When you open the last pages, you're going to see the two types of uh, curriculum vitae. We have, uh, of course, uh, we have the curriculum vitae, and normally the Americans call it the resume. 
the resume it's just in america but it means the same curriculum vitae now you're going to realize that there are two different ways of writing this curriculum vitae we have the british style and then the american Style. But I would encourage you to follow the British style because it's what we are following as in the Ugandan context. So follow the curriculum vitae of the British, um, British style. So here you're going to see that when you look at the profile, the profile briefly talks about, you talk about yourself and present yourself in a, a paragraph of about two lines. You present yourself to the employer-to-be so that within those two lines, within that paragraph, the employer-to-be can really see which kind of person is going to work with which kind of person, uh, besides the academics, besides what else, what, what are those other uh, basics that you have or skills that you have that can identify you or can talk about you. So that's why we're saying that present yourself positively. And here we are saying you're going to present yourself positively, especially when you talk about your profile or objective. Here you can present yourself as somebody who is committed, let's say, committed, you can present yourself as somebody who is hardworking. Hmm? Let, let, let this employer to be see you as somebody who is competent. Hmm? Competent, you can say smart, hmm? intelligent, and so on and so on. But present yourself in a positive way so that this person can really see that, oh, I'm going to work with the person who is committed. Oh, I think I'm going to work with the person who is hardworking. I really want to try out how, uh, and see how competent this person is, how smart, intelligent, and so on. And make sure that this presentation is made in an accurate way so that at least you don't leave any reason to be doubted in any way. To be employed and then we are saying make your cv attractive hmm? make it attractive somebody is going to ask how in other words at least because first of all your cv is going to be typed but as you type it can you make sure that you type it in a, 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 a better way which um can you make sure that at least you highlight some of the subtopics that you really wish to attract uh, the attention of the person who's going to read it you could decide to underline them especially as we shall see in our presentation make it attractive make this person really go to the point that he wants to see if this person is interested in the education background it should be well highlighted that this is where the education background is we're going to see as we go on in uh, the sample at least i've brought for you of the curriculum vita that i've drawn that you realize that in the education background i've put it in the table very well well stipulated and somebody can easily or it makes it easier for the person who is reading to read it very well and so any other aspect that you think should really attract attention, put it there clearly so that the other person finds ease in reading. Then uh, the next we are saying choose a type of face, such as Times Romans. When you're typing, make sure that you, you, you choose. A type face such as Roman Times, the, the, rather the Times New Roman, then er, maybe Ariel, um, and make sure that whatever you have chosen is really legible. Sometimes we write things and we do not care about others. Please take the time and make sure that people can read your work because you do not know who is going to look at your work. Maybe he has a problem with the site. Maybe. So make the letters really uh, big enough to be seen. I'm not saying that make them extremely big, but at least make sure that they are really legible even as you, as you do type. So basically, uh, those are some of the few things you should put in mind when you're writing your curriculum vitae. So that as you present it to that person who's going to read it, you ensure that clarity is very important. And then the way you present yourself, the other person will uh, uh, put it in, take it in mind. The way you present yourself will either make, uh, make you get the job or even sometimes not get it, depending on how you've done it. So basically, today we're going to look at some of the aspects, some of... Uh, what are of the things that we should really put in our curriculum vitae. While we are writing our curriculum vitae, what are those things we should not forget to put? What are those things we should ensure that we really consider in writing? Okay? Um, we're going to look at, uh, we're saying that, the curriculum vitae. Should... Uh, to begin with, we're going to look at uh, the biodata.
this is personal information or personal life. Eh? And maybe uh, you could ask, what are we going to put in the bio data? Here, to begin with, we shall have what we call the name. You put your name, uh, depending on uh, what, what your name is. You could say Nachi into Nachi into Faith. Hmm? That is your name. Then you come and you say you put your date of birth. You indicate it there. You could maybe say 12 of hmm? February. Maybe let's say 2002. Hmm? Then after there, you could decide to come up and say, um, what else should we have in there by your data? You could, you could, you could say um, maybe gender. Normally we put sex. Female. Then you come and say nationality. Nationality. Uh, you could be, if you're Ugandan, you put Ugandan. Then uh, you could decide to maybe marital status. Could say single. If you're married, you also indicate that you're married. But of course, being students uh, in, in what? Being students in, in school, we may not expect you to be married. However, it, it, depending on what you're writing, because sometimes the question comes in an assumption, uh, assuming you've already graduated in this and this, and then this is how we, maybe there is a job here, and then we expect you to write a curriculum vitae. You could decide to put whatever you want. It could be you're married or you're single. All, all contented, whatever you, but normally we are either married or single. And then from there we shall have the address. And here in this address, I've categorized it in three. I have the physical, ex, uh, where you exactly stay. I could say um, maybe Zana. Zana, uh, maybe Wachiso. Uh, then you could put a uh, telephone, your telephone number. Um, you think of any number. Then you could put your email also. You say, uh, this is Natching to Faith at Gmail. Dot com. So basically, those could be the few elements that you could put in your in your in your in your bio data, your personal information. Uh, what really says? I mean, talks about you. You give you. And sometimes they will add. They, you can write son name and then you write the other name. Of course, you know what the son name is. That would be Nachi into. Then the other names could be maybe Faith Evans, something like that. Then you give the date of birth as written there, or as you can see on the screen. Then you can you, you give your um, sex, which is either female or male. Then the nationality, where you where you are born, uh, where, or where you originate, and then the marital status. Uh, there are other aspects that you could put, but these are the basics of what you could have. Then your address, basically how people can contact you if they want you, where they can find you. The physical address. Sometimes you could even add the box number. Okay. Then you give your telephone number in case they don't find you there or they can't find you there. Can they call you on which numbers? Then you indicate them. Then you also indicate your, your email in case you have one. That is basically the, uh, the personal information. Uh, we shall continue and say what else should uh, a curriculum vitae have? A curriculum vitae will also expect uh, you to make sure that you neatly at least write and express yourself in the, in the most neat way so that you're clear. I think I talked about clarity at the beginning. And then we are going to have, uh, um, we're going to have uh, maybe a profile, like we said, because after you've written your, your bio data, 
then you, the, the, the other person who is about to employ you would wish to know you, to know you more. What else can you say about yourself? So let's go to the profile and then we shall say, under profile. Remember I said you highlight or you underline most of, uh, most of the areas that you think are really important and can catch the, the eye of the other person who is about or who is reading your CV or curriculum vitae. So here I could say since I use the name uh, Nachintu, um, here on the screen you could read and see our profile. Conrad is a smart, committed, hard-working young man who is enthusiastic about work and is able to accomplish duty with minimal supervision. So remember what I said about uh, talking about yourself in a positive and accurate way? Positive way, you present yourself in a manner that will show the other person that you, you're really competent enough, you're smart, you're intelligent, and you know what you're going to do. I think every, every employer would wish to work with a person who is really committed. Every employer would wish to work with a person who is hardworking. Every employer would wish to work with a person who has those best qualities. So why not present yourself in such a manner that will show the employer to be that you're such a kind of person that he has been looking for, that you're one in a million, that you're that kind of person, this person has been looking, or this company has been longing for. So like we have said, we present ourselves in a, a positive way. So here we, we shall use, we shall say faith. You talk about yourself in a positive way like we have said. Faith is... A competent. Those are different positive adjectives that bring out the positive uh, way of expressing yourself or talking about yourself or describing yourself. Is a competent, uh, let's say, competent, intelligent, smart young woman. Who is committed to do to do work or rather to work with the shall say minimal supervision? There are people who always want to be supervised at work. But here you're trying to show the person who is going to employ you that with or without supervision, me, I can do my work very well. And I think every employer would wish to work with such a person. So basically here, the essence we have this profile is to briefly talk about, you summarize yourself in a, a positive way, but a short, in a short form to show the other employer of the kind of person he's about to, to deal with. So after the, the profile, we're going to look at the education background. Remember we have said that? Education background. We have said that while you're presenting your ideas or your aspects in the CV, if possible, bold the letters. If possible, underline them. If possible, at least show clarity. Attract the attention of the person reading to those subheadings that you feel that this person will, or will need to look at. The person, like I said before, the person might just be interested in your bio data. And the moment you highlight a bio data, he immediately, if he, that's what he's looking for, your personal life, he will immediately go to that. If you have highlighted, let's say, the education background and that's what he's been looking for, he will directly go to that, whichever page it is on. So here it is followed by the education background. And so the education background, this one briefly talks about, I mean, how far you have gone in academics. What have you achieved in academics? So here, this is where you, you, your qualifications will be brought out. And we are saying that whether you're talking about the education background, please begin from the highest, the, 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 the highest achieved. If you graduated yesterday, maybe with your PhD, begin with that. If it was last year that you, 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 you graduated with a master's, begin with that. If it was the other year that you graduated with either bachelor's, a diploma, begin with that. So we are beginning with the highest achieved in our education or in our career, rather qualification. So here, me, what I've done to make it a little bit more organized and simpler, so I have drawn a simple table like this. 
or as you could, could see on the screen. So you, you, you look at the, the education background, how it has been drawn or how it has been written. We, the first column we have is for years. Then we shall have the schools or institutions you have gone to. We shall have the awards that you achieved from there or you got. Could be award or awards. So basically that is how our table looks like. Um, this is how uh, where I have Conrad Obiaga. Um, Conrad Obiaga went to school, uh, went, uh, has achieved his bachelor's of statistics and accounting. And that is his highest, highest achieved. So he went to that university 2010 and to 2013. That is Kabale University. And that's where he got his bachelor's of statistics and accounting. And that is his highest achieved. So from there, we go below and we see it from 2008 to 2009, he went to Kauku High School. And what did he get there as the award? He got the Uganda Advanced Certificate of Education. I know many students, many learners will find this very long and they would want to shorten it. Please do not shorten, do not write them in abbreviations. Write them in full as I have written them on the screen, as you see. So we go below and then see from 2004 to 2007, uh, Obiaga Conrad James uh, went to Kolo High School. And what did he get there? He got Uganda Certificate of Education. That is the level of senior four. And then we look at his primary level. Where did he go from 1997 to 2003? He went to Batvade Primary School. And then he got the primary living examination certificate. It was not indicated there. Certificate. So that is what he achieved there. Now, depending on what you don't say that, ah, but now I must write somebody with, if somebody, if, if you are a person who has achieved a master's, or maybe if the assumption was, if the assumption was that you have achieved a master's, please indicate it there. And if the assumption is you have achieved a PhD, also indicate it there. If the assumption is you have achieved a, a, a degree or a diploma, do not escalate. I know the question will come with an assumption of what level of education you are. And please read the question very well and understand it, which will make your work easy while you're writing this curriculum vita. I, because I imagine I'm speaking to people whose uh, highest level of education is primary seven. They have not even achieved their uh, Uganda Certificate of Education. But I know if a question comes, it will come with an assumption of you have attained a given level of education. Please read the question very well, understand it so that you can include it in your education background. So that is what we have at our education, with our education background. I have drawn a table like this. I normally in, uh, 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 ask my candidates to draw a table so as to organize their work in such a way so that it comes out very clear and easy to, to, to see and, and, and identify what they have written. So from the education background, we shall go to the working experience. Do you have any working experience? Shall go to the working experience. If you do not have any working experience, do not die. Don't sacrifice yourself. You, the truth is you don't, you don't have it. But if the question comes and they have asked you to, uh, to, to assume that you've worked, let's say, in given areas, depending on what you've studied, maybe you've ever worked in a factory as this, you've ever worked in this industry as this, you've ever worked in this company as this. Now, those are assumptions that will be given to you or sometimes created because... At this point, we expect a learner to be very creative or to bring the creativity skills at high or at large. So here we have our Conrad as our candidate here. Uh, uh, Conrad has, uh, when you look at the working experience, 2018 to 2020, where we are, Conrad has been a branch manager at Standbeek Bank, Masindi. And what has he done? Some of the roles he has participated in, all of this, uh, the responsibilities. He has supervised all the branch activities, including loans or giving out loans, the other banking services. So we have here, he has indicated the years also. And he has begun from the highest, where, the high, where he is or where he has been. That is if he still has that job. Yeah, he has indicated the years. Sometimes you might even indicate the months. 
when you went you, you acquired that job and up to when so there we are and then he has also gone ahead to tell us that in, from 2016 to 2017 he was also working somewhere else that is accounts manager at machine teachers circle and what did he do there some of the responsibilities he had there he kept teachers books of accounts gave out loans to teachers updated teachers on their financial statuses so you, you're going to see that this person is showing you which years he has spent at a given working station and what were his responsibilities there so as you write, you should also be in position to do what? To show us that. Remember, Conrad graduated from what you've been seeing uh, on the screen. He graduated in 2013. So the imagination is since 2013 he has been working. And so we shall continue to look at his working experience, uh, telling us from 2014 to 2015. When he graduated from Kabale University. He has been working uh, as a bursar. Okay? He has been working as a bursar at St. Peter's. St. Peter's Primary School. Primary School or Boys School in Kabali. So when this person graduated in 2013, he did not get the job immediately, but in 2014, he got a job, which he stayed, on which station he stayed from 2014 to 2015. Then from there, that's when he went up to 2016 and 2017. He also worked there. He also went to 2018, 2020, where he was. So today, we do not know the job right now he's asking for. I want to imagine that the job he's asking for is within the lines of accounting. Because this is what he studied. This is where he speciali specialized. And if you look at his area of experience, this is what he has been working at. He has been a bursar. Of course, a bursar in school keeps money and maybe looks at... Uh, books of accounts of a given school. If you look at uh, his experience in 2016, 2017, he's still been giving, keeping books of accounts of teachers' circle. And then when you look at 2018, 2020, he has been working at Stan Big Bank, and he has been looking at, rather, rather, managing areas of loans and then the other banking activities. So you, re you really see that his area of specialization is in accounting and maybe statistics as he studied. Maybe the job he's applying for is a, a better job, a bigger job than this he has been doing. But basically, this is his uh, area of a rather working experience. So from the working experience, we shall go and then show what are those personal attributes that we have. We want to look at those, uh, th those good uh, characteristics that I think the other person could admire from us or would make use of in case all that those, those, those characteristics that we would use to improve on a, maybe a, a company's well-being. So we want, we want to see who can make us better or make the company better in case we join. So we are looking at Conrad's personal attributes as the one is saying that he's a, a reliable person. Reliable people are hard to find, but if he's one, then that means we can rely on in, a, in, in any way that you may maybe understand or the other person who is about to employ you may understand. Maybe you're the kind of person who can do something even extra, the work extra more than what maybe you've been asked to do. Maybe you can fill in positions of others in case they're not there. Then we are looking at another attribute as being honest. Everyone would wish to work with a person who is honest, really. Then we are looking at somebody who is saying that he's quick to learn. What about this? I mean, this is a good characteristic uh, of a person. If you are quick to learn, because sometimes when you're going to, about to join a given company or a given body or a given, uh, uh, a given, uh, a given, a given workforce, there are some things that you're going to be trained on all about. 
So if you're that kind of person who's very fast to learn, then everybody would wish you to join them. Otherwise, there are people who are very slow to learn, and you know, they will take a lot of time, and they will talk a lot of resources, and before you know it, maybe they have not even learned. So everybody would wish to work with a person who has such kinds of uh, attributes. So please talk about yourself so that this person who is about to employ you get to know how good you are and uh, some of the good things you're going to add on their workforce. Then we're going to look at some of the skills. Some of the key skills that you may have. What are those skills that you have uh, with you or you may have acquired? Because sometimes, I know I tell my students that after your school, after your university, because some, sometimes you, 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 you think that after my senior four, I'll go to senior six, then after senior six, I'll just go to university for three years, four years, or five years, and then I will be done with education. My dear, sometimes things are not like that. Sometimes things don't end like that. Within that, maybe while, even you, while you are at university, or sometimes in your senior four vacation, senior six, you may acquire a skill here and there. And this could be maybe the computer skill, this could be uh, maybe uh, communication skills. This could be a different language, acquiring or learning a different language. So all these skills, we need them. And so some of the skills that uh, Obiega Conrad has, one is high level, high levels of confidentiality. high level of confidentiality. And then two, we're going to see that this person has computer skills. And uh, within this, he has, uh, at least he can uh, do the word processing. And then we also see that he has a clean driving permit. Maybe with this, you, if you will have saved the company an extra cost of paying for a driver for you. That means if they avail you with a vehicle, you're able to drive yourself wherever maybe you're supposed to drive. Then this person also has uh, uh, excellent communication. communication skills. So these are some of the skills that this person has. Uh, you could add on, you could have so many other skills. You could maybe sign language uh, and maybe any other skill that you may wish to add on, which you think can help you get that job. Please make sure you avail it so that your employer-to-be can really see that you're the very person who suits that uh, job that you're about to get. Then uh, sometimes you could talk about the languages spoken. Hmm? Sometimes you could talk about the languages this is also a skill, but sometimes in detail, languages uh, spoken. Yes, here, sometimes you could also go ahead to draw uh, maybe a, a table. You could, you, rather, you could go ahead and then tell us here. Uh, let's say here, maybe English. Uh, English language, then maybe Kiswahili. And maybe, let's, let me put French. Mm -hmm. Here we could put for you. Uh, we could say very good. And then good. And then here we could say fair. Uh, here, we expect you being a student of, sorry, we expect you being a student of English language. To speak English very well, unless otherwise. Hmm? So here we shall have very good, here we shall have good, and then here we shall have fair. So here, when it comes to English, here we expect you to put a tick. And then here, Kiswahili, maybe if you're, you're good. And maybe French, we shall also expect you to be, you know, fair. At least you have. Now, 
let, let me assume that they're going to employ you in areas, uh, rather in, a, in, in UN, and you're supposed to go to an area where there is uh, French speaking. Um, uh, if you can fairly speak some French, then why not get that job? So make sure that you show the person, I mean, I mean the employer to be, how many languages you can also speak. It could be a, a, a clear way or paving way for you to get that very good job. The table is not very clear here, but you could, you could put it very well and then um, bring out what you're exactly talking about. Um, we have, um, sorry, we have already talked about the communication skills and, then, uh, and so forth. So here we're going to look at the referees. Do not forget the referees. The referees. Who are the referees? The referees, basically, these are the people who can talk about you. People who can say some things about you. So make sure that the referees know you very well. And if possible, call them prior before you put their names and their addresses and telephone numbers on your curriculum vitae. So the referees could be about two or three, depending on how many you know. This could range from personal, people who know you personally, uh, people who have told you, like your teachers. I normally ask my students, if you wanted a referee from your teachers here or from school, uh, who can you think, whom do you think can recommend you? And they laugh, because some of them have been very stubborn. Some, but in most cases, these teachers will recommend you if you give them a call prior or if you, 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 you remind them of who you are. And some of them will remember you even if you don't remind them. But you have to let them know that you've put their names there as a... As, they, as your referees. So let these referees get to know. So you could come here and say, here, Conrad, put uh, three referees. Um, and so one of them is uh, Mr. Walugembe Habat. Habat. And uh, wait, what is his address? He's the head teacher. He's the head teacher, one of the schools that Conrad went to. The head teacher, uh, Kauku High School. And then uh, you could put the box number there because they may want to write to him. Maybe 86, 70. Hmm? Uh, Wachisu. And then you put his telephone number as well. His telephone number. Mm, that is it. So you could have here another referee. Uh, you could have Miss Awori. Bridget, who is the dean? Uh, dean Kabale University, Kabale University, P.O. Box. Eighty-six zero two, Kavale. And then you put her telephone number. You put her telephone number there. That is, in case they need any, you could also put their emails if you have. And in case they need anything, they need more information about you, they can go ahead and call Mr. Walugembe, who is the head teacher of which school you went to, then you can call also Miss Awori Bridget, a dean of the university you went to. These people could talk well or good uh, really about you. Then we, after there, we look at the declaration, how you declare the information that you've written. Because the curriculum vita is very personal and individual. So you must own it. Then last we shall look at the declaration where you say, I declare that the information above is true and mine. That is a very strong statement that you make uh, there. And when you make it, you should own it and make sure that it is really true information. Then after that, on your left-hand side, you come and sign. 
You come and sign and then put your name. Actually, again, it's the signature. You put your, your date, the date of, uh, of the day you have signed that uh, curriculum vita. Because we keep on changing this curriculum vita depending on our achievements. So after there, you come and say, I declare that the information above is true and mine. And after that, you come here and sign. And then here you say, of course, again, it's a signature. You come and say, let's say 10th April 2020. This is the most recent curriculum vita that you have. And so here we shall come and write our name, Obiaga Conrad. Conrad James. So that is your curriculum vita with you. And I hope at the end of the day, we have learned how to write a curriculum vita. And I know that at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to write your own curriculum vita. Now, I want to leave a question with you so that you can try it out on your, on your own. Sometimes when I read this question, the students don't get it very well. Today I want to write it down. So I'll say a question. So the question is, assuming you are a graduate of medicine and a job has been advertised of a medical doctor at Chisubi Hospital, write a CV uh, to accompany your application letter. So that is the question. I'm going to expect you to write that CV very well. Make sure you clearly present it as we have learned throughout our lesson. Thank you so much for being attentive. Until we meet next time.